Hey, do you want to steal some drums from Asia? Korea to be more specific. South Korea to be even more specific. Thank God, I don't think the drums in North Korea are too, too fresh. Anyways, let's do this. So yeah, I've mentioned this before, but I like writing songs, and sometimes writing songs is hard. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. There are just some days that you have no inspiration, and for me, the thing that gets me going the easiest is finding rhythm for my songs. If I have a cool drum beat, usually I can write a cool song, but because I'm not a drummer, Sometimes it's hard writing the drums as well for my songs, for my own songs, right? So what do I do then? I mentioned this before on my channel, but sometimes I like to steal drums from other songs. Because drums and drum beats cannot be copyrighted. So you can always steal them, which is great. <laughs> But because I'm a punk rock guy, sometimes stealing songs from punk rock songs, it's a little bit too obvious, right? And I've dropped some hints in the past that I'm not only a punk rock guy, but I'm also a K-pop guy. Yes, I do like my K-pop. I don't know why, it just happened, you know? I started with Blackpink and now I'm all the way into the Twice and into the Everglow and into the, the Billy. Now there's a band called Billy, which is great, but yeah. I'm all the way deep in the rabbit hole and I really love the songs, I really love the videos, it's just fun and the drum beats are great. I really love some of the rhythms that these K-pop songs have because they, they're not afraid to go for it with the drums, you know? So today we're gonna steal some K-pop drums from K-pop songs and I'm gonna write some punk rock on top of it and see what happens because I've been obsessed with mixing these two genres together. What would you call it? I would call it punk K-pop. It's almost like pancake, so it's cool, like punk K-pop. Yeah. I like it. Anyways, so I'm gonna try and write some punk K-pop. And I'm not the first one. There's other people that has done it before. Like Motson wrote a really cool song for TXT and some other punk rock artists are starting to write for K-pop artists. It's cool. It's a cool mixture. I I'm, I'm still not satisfied with the final results they're getting. So today I'm gonna try and get some really K-pop drums and some really punk rock ideas and blend them together and see what happens. Might go wrong, but it might work. We're just on a path to something in the future that might be good or might be horrible, but I urge you to take that path with me, okay? So to start off, I'm gonna show you how I steal the drums. I've mentioned this before, but I'm gonna show you now how I do it. I'm not gonna be able to play the song that I'm stealing from because, you know, YouTube is gonna uh, murder me, but I'm gonna show you the main process and then we're gonna skip the part where I actually copy the drums because I can't play the song, but I'm gonna show you the basic idea and then we're gonna go into the songwriting later. One of my favorite artists in punk pop is this dude called Timing. He's from a band called Shiny, and I don't really like Shiny, but Timing has a really good song called Advice. Today we're gonna steal the drums from that song. I got the mp3 of that song right here, right? The easiest way to do this, actually, is to open your browser right there. By the way, juliangrim.com, if you want private uh, consultations with me, you can book me right here. It's good, it's cool, it's fun, do it. So the first thing you wanna do is find the BPM of the song, and the easiest way to do that nowadays, you don't even have to tap on Ableton anymore. You can go to this website here called TuneBat, I think that's how you call it, and you can just search for your song. So timing advice and it's gonna tell you the key and the BPM of the song which is great today we only need the BPM so let's put the BPM here in Ableton 162 so I'm gonna drag my mp3 here to Ableton right and the first thing I have to do is double click it and check that warp is off I don't want warp on this okay I want it to be as it is in the real world I don't want Ableton to funk around with the the, the tempo of the song the second thing I want to do is sync this to my grid and for some random reason it almost synced to my grid but it's not perfectly synced you can see here so all I have to do here I'll find a transient that I like I like this one I can just drag it to the grid like it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just something for you to base your drum beat on and now if I turn on the click and I play this song they should be synced I'm not gonna play any more of the song this right here is the chorus of the song you can see how loud it is right here this is the part that I'm copying so I'm gonna delete the rest of the song right here and I only need this part I don't want to copy everything because that's a bit too much right the next thing I'm gonna do is open a drum plugin and luckily my friends from UGEM they gave me a plugin called idle which is a plugin for k-pop drums see this is the plugin right here it's called idle beat maker it has all the standard k-pop drum sounds 
sounds that you need when you're starting to write K-pop songs. So I'm gonna be able to find drums here that sound pretty close to the drums of this original song here. As you can see, this plugin is really simple, but that's why I like it because it doesn't let me think too much. It's a perfect interface to write songs because you don't waste time uh, building a sound. You just go directly to the sound that you want, you find it and you start writing. So it's a great, great, great plugin for writing songs. But anyways, I'm just gonna go through it quickly. You can choose multiple kits here. And once you like a kit, even after you chose it, you can still click on the individual pieces here and choose a different piece from a different kit. So for example, I have this kick here and I want to change just the kick. You can click down here and you're changing just the kick. It has some really cool master effects. It has a filter here for, for transitions and things like that. For now, we're going to leave that in the middle. It has a saturation. That sounds really nice and it's really easy to use. Maximize to make your drums punch really hard. And it has ambience to make your drums roomy. And the good thing about these knobs is that it sounds like they apply the effects differently to each piece of the drums in a way that it makes sense. So you can hear that if I put the ambience up, the snare has loads of ambience, but the kick doesn't which makes sense, right? You don't want that much ambience on a kick usually. And it has a couple more mix effects up here as well. This changes the sound of your whole drum kit. So this is just a brilliant preset, which makes your drums really, really top endy, I would say. Frosty makes them a little bit less top endy. This one puts like a flanger on it. The sharp one makes it really sharp. Roomy makes it roomy. See, it has loads of little effects and this is really cool because you can have the same drum kit with different mix effects throughout your song and, and create a little bit of dynamic and, and difference between the sections of your song. I like it. It's simple. It's nice. This is the plugin we're going to use today. So the first thing we're going to do is find the same sound from this song, at least a similar one in this plugin. So let's do this. So this song has quite a dry and minimalistic drum kit. So let's try and find one of those. I feel the shadow ones pretty good. Very minimalistic, very, very dry, but still with some ambience in there. It's really good. Let me put Brilliant back on here. Yeah, this is a good one for sure. I might play around with the individual pieces later, but um, yeah, that's how easy it was to find a similar sound to the one that I'm trying to copy. So super simple and always I can change the individual pieces down here. So the next step is to copy the drum groove. If you zoom in here, you can kind of see the drum groove here in the bigger transients in the song. So that gives me a bit of an idea of where the drum is going to hit. Like I can see the kicks here and I can see the snares and the kicks and the snares. Of course, I'm going to listen to it, make sure everything's all right. But what I usually do is I play with the song on my keyboard once and then I go back and I edit the MIDI by hand, just lining up and making sure everything's OK. I'm probably going to make some mistakes, but that's OK, because when you're copying some Thing. <laughs> the mistakes are actually a good thing because that's going to distance your song a little bit more from the original song. So mistakes are good in this case. I'm going to try and copy this as close as I can. I'm not going to be able to show you guys this because it's a copyrighted song, but I'll be right back and I might do a couple other songs just for fun. But yeah, give me one moment. You see, I just played with the song because I know the song. I kind of know the drum groove a little bit already Then I quantize it. Then I just check. I come back here. I check if everything's OK. I listen to it a bunch of times. So here, for example, right here, this is a bit early. So I drag it back like this right here. These two are early. These two are fine. You see, lining up with the transients, just making sure everything is in place. Then I do another pass for the hi-hats. I always record the symbols in the hi-hat separately. It's a bit easier. Don't forget to press the little plus here in Ableton to make sure you enable the MIDI overdub. And that's the basic idea. You see, I'm going to copy exactly what's in here. 
up here. It takes a bit of practice, but it will also help you develop a library of drum grooves in your head, which is really nice. Like if you're not a drummer, this is a really good thing to do because it will add a lot to your arsenal when you're trying to write drums. But anyways, let me finish this up. Let me finesse this, right? And I'll be right back. And here we are, and I've done three songs. <laughs> I might have exaggerated a little bit, but I, I was having fun. I like playing drums on my keyboard because I can't play drums in the real world. That's the closest thing I'm gonna get from playing drums is playing them with my fingers on my keyboard. And you know that I have the fastest fingers on YouTube. Or maybe I don't, or maybe I do. Please don't check if somebody's faster than me. Please don't. I am the fastest one. Don't check though. Promise me? Okay, trust me. Yeah, you trust me. Anyways, timing, advice. I've done Everglow, also known as Everglow, first, which is a heavier song. And I've done Itzy Not Shy, which is a faster song and more chaotic drum part. You see how many little drum hits this one has? This one was hard. This one was hard, but it was fun. It, it was fun to dissect exactly what was going on on those drums. Again, none of these are perfect, but they're close enough and the imperfections make them more me than ever. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna play you the drum part and you're gonna see I have three different tracks because I have three different instances of idol here, the plugging, with three different drum sounds to approach the original drum sound as best as I could. You see I have the spider kit for the first one here, for the second one, the everglow one, I have the tattoo kit, but I think, yeah, I changed some pieces, you see, I have the snare from Flash, and then Itzy here, which kit do I got for this one? I got the flower kit. So let's hear how these three little loops sound. These are the different drums that I have here. If you're really curious, you should go and listen to Timing Advice, Everglow First and Itzy, Not Shy. Go on YouTube, search for them, but come back, please. Listen to the songs because they're quite fun and you're going to see probably the best skin that you've ever seen in your life. The skincare in Korea is on another level, so... You're gonna see really pleasant skin in front of your eyes as well. But anyways, was that creepy? Maybe a little bit. They're all 20 years old and I'm, I'm 34 and I'm talking about their skin. I'm not a murderer, I, I, I promise. So, what I'm gonna do now, remember, I'm, I'm gonna try and mix the genres. So I'm not gonna try to produce a K-pop song on top of these drums. I'm gonna try and be as punky, as grungy, as rocky as I can. So let me get my guitar and let's have some fun. Alright, so let's loop the first one and let's play a little bit and see if we can come up with something. The first thing that I did was find the rhythm of the kick. I am a guy that likes to play with the rhythm of the kick. I, I think it's impactful, I think it's cool. It doesn't work every time, but I think it's cool, especially for a song like this that has really clear kicks. The kicks really are the accents of the song. I tried to find first the rhythm of the kick on my guitar and then some notes, and I went for a chromatic descent, which is something that I really like. I do that in a lot of songs. Remember, this is the Julian Grimm channel, and in the Julian Grimm channel, you always double and pan your guitars. So let's do this, this one left, this one center, let's record the exact same thing again. And now let's find a little lead for this, you know, a little cool memorable thing for the middle. So this one we live in the middle, let's rename this so we know what we're doing, right? We have guitar left, guitar right, and guitar middle and with these three guitars you can probably make a lot of punk rock songs and grunge songs and you're gonna be set for days like three guitars is all you need of course you can add more for fun but three guitars will get you a long way so start with that always let's find something melodic for the middle Let's 
pretty cool, isn't it? I like it. I know what this song is asking for. It's asking for 808s. But I promised myself I was going to try and be punky and rocky and grungy. So I'm going to get my bass and do bass. I'm not going to do the obvious thing. I'm going to do real bass. See, and in the end I had some extra ideas there so I just let it go and let it loop but what I can do now is I just choose the entire section of the song here and for example I can duplicate the time make it double the time so now what I can do is get the first part that I recorded down here the bass this one and then I can just drag the second part that I did right here with the bass right here the take lanes leave everything there for you which is great and then you can just delete them if you don't want to keep a bunch of stuff there that you're not going to use but now I have a loop that variates and I can even create more variation by duplicating this a bunch of times like this so maybe we can start just lead guitar and drums so maybe we put the space up here like this and then maybe it goes into this everybody together and then again the bass playing the different thing and just the lead guitar so let's listen to how that sounds That's a really cool little structure that you have here. I could just export this, put it on my phone and take it with me and I could think of melodies for it throughout a day and just think about it. This is actually a really cool little structure. It's so easy to develop this into a song because now we have so much to work with, so much, because you don't need much to make a song. Of course, you can go crazy, add a bunch of things to it, a bunch of different parts, but you can actually build a song from just a loop like this and make something really cool if you're very careful with the melodies that you sing and the way that you treat each section of the song, a loop might be enough to get you a full song and it's always an awesome starting point anyways i have these two other drum parts here and i'm gonna quickly have some fun with them and i'll show you the results in a second since i already have the session open which is something that i usually do i have a session open to just throw in songwriting ideas in there and because i already have all the tracks that i need now i have the drums i have the bass i have the guitars i can just have fun play the different parts play different ideas and export everything in the end into different sessions and I'll, i'm gonna have three songs which is super cool anyways let me go for it. All right, and I played around with all my little drum parts. It was very fun. I did a bunch of little loops, and now I have a bunch of little starts for some little songs in the future. And I did my best to mix K-pop and pop punk and finally create punk K-pop. I'm getting there. It's not quite there yet, but I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I hope you stay with me for this journey, because I will feature some more K-pop content on my channel. I'm never gonna forget about punk rock anyways as well, because that's my main thing. I'm always gonna produce punk rock forever and after. But a little bit of K-pop here and there is always fun, right? And it's good to learn, you know? It's good to learn how to produce poppy, difficult to produce music. Let me show you what I got here. I gave it a little mix and by gave it a little mix, I mean I put a bunch of stuff on my master channel to compress it and EQ it and that's it. And maybe I played around with the volumes a little bit, but that's it. This is just a demo. This is just something to get me going and writing songs and making things and trying to discover new sounds and new mixtures. I'm gonna show you one by one and I hope you like it. And I have one more little trick in the end for you. So stick around, listen to all the songs and I'll show you the little trick in the end. Here you go. Next little loop.
a short one, but tasty, a little bit more of a breakdown moment, right? Anyways, next one. So I got three completely different loops. And for example, this one is a big breakdown, slow down. This would go better with normal drums because I'm using UGM. They have a bunch of drum plugins. And one of them is a very cool plugin for punk rock and grungy music called Brute. I featured it on my channel already, but because it's from UGM as well, all of the notes are gonna line up here. So all of the notes that I played here on my idol kit are gonna line up with the brute kit so i can just replace it like this drag it here now this is a brute and not an idol you see it right here and if i play it now it's gonna be way more rock and roll like you guys like it right And that's how easy it was to go from the K-pop drums to the rock drums. Anyways, I think I've talked enough for this video. I hope you like these kinds of video where I'm just creative and just having fun and showing you little tips and tricks here and there, showing you some cool plugins, some cool tricks. So yeah, if you like what I do, please press all the buttons out there that help me in this world. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have to feed my cats and my cats feed on YouTube subscribers. So please, subscribe to my channel now. And I see you next time. Bye.